What up friends, this is the first dish to come out of my Avatar The Last Airbender series, where I cook up a dish inspired by one of the four nations. The first nation that we're taking on is the Earth Kingdom, and because of their particularly dynastic vibe, I decided to go with lion's head meatballs. This dish has been a banquet staple since the Qing Dynasty, and the fact that they look like giant boulders makes it even better for this theme. I'm keeping the contents of my meatballs pretty simple. I'm going with water chestnuts, tofu, ginger, powdered five spice, light and dark soy sauce, and sake, as well as obviously the ground pork. So if you have the opportunity to buy fresh water chestnuts, I suggest you definitely go do that. You'll still get that pleasant watery crunch out of the canned stuff. Lion's Head meatballs are a pretty nuanced dish when it comes to flavor, so fresh water chestnuts will definitely make a difference here. If that's not available to you, something's still better than nothing and go with the canned stuff. Now for this particular meatball recipe, your source of crunch or textural interest will be coming from the diced ginger and water chestnuts. So you want the dices for both to be pretty small. This is especially true for the ginger because too big of a piece of ginger will ruin the experience of the dish. Now cabbage is not an ingredient that you find in lion's head meatballs often. The only reason why I'm doing it is because I wanted to do a shout out to one of my favorite characters in the show, which was the cabbage vendor. A long time ago, I was taught by somebody who used to work for the Shanghai Club in Hong Kong to add tofu in with my pork for lion's head meatballs. It really does make the whole thing extremely tender. It also kind of shows this all or nothing approach to using tofu in the West is a little misguided. And if you never consider using tofu as like an intermix with your proteins, you really should start doing that because it is just a lovely ingredient if you just took the time to get to know it. I don't do this all the time, but for my more mild dishes, sometimes I'll replace Chinese cooking wine with sake. It's not better or worse, but as a person who cooks with Chinese cooking wine a lot, sometimes the variety is nice. When incorporating all your ingredients together, first you gotta use your hands so that you can get everything nice and mixed in with each other. But then eventually I'll switch over to like a really large rice paddle and kind of just like pulverize the meat so that it becomes a more smooth, almost like, this is kind of gross, but almost like a goo texture. Actually, I should have said paste. Paste is a better word for it. So yeah, pulverize it into a meat paste. The point is to get your bite into the meatball as tender as possible, and doing this helps you achieve that. Now, because we worked so hard in trying to get our meatball as tender as possible, if we were to just poach it right now, it would probably dissolve, so we have to fry them. You're not trying to cook them all the way. Basically, you're just trying to achieve an outer crust of cooked meat so that anything that is on the inside will stay put once you braise it. This also has the effect of intensifying the flavors on the outside. So you have the benefit of all the flavors of a fried meatball, but then like just a nice satisfying soft bite of a braised one. And another quick tip, coat your hands in oil before shaping your meatballs and putting them into the fryer. It'll stop the meatballs from sticking to your hands and it's safer to do it this way rather than use water. So at this point, you should be using a very high quality bro- Why am I pouring it like that? I don't know what I was thinking. Anyways, you should be using a very high quality broth when braising your meatballs in here. You've worked really hard in making some really good meatballs. It would be a shame if you just used something like a basic stock. Because the meatballs will be taking in the flavors from the broth, as well as making the broth more intense with its own flavor. That's why last week I dropped the herbal chicken broth recipe so that you could use it with this one this week. They work really well together. Now plating wise, I'm using bok choy as well as a yellow and green clay pot to kind of unify the theme of the Earth Kingdom using colors. And even though this dish is usually served on a pretty low plate, I decided to use a high bowl to kind of represent the high walls of Ba Sing Se, kind of surrounding this 
bounty of green, and then topping that off with giant boulders as representatives of the earthbenders that are in there. I did very slightly steam the bok choy in the broth for like a few minutes. Yes, it's important to cook your vegetables, but I did it because I really wanted that color intensified. <laughs> Once your meatballs are done cooking, take some of the broth and put it into a saucepan and then boil that up with a slurry that you add made out of cornstarch and cold water. This will thicken the broth so that it can stick to the meatballs really well so you have that intense flavor from the broth added not just to the soup underneath but to the meatballs on top. So there you have it, Earthbender Lion's Head Meatballs. Well I guess the only difference I put in here is the cabbage so I guess this should be like cabbage vendors or Cabbage Man's Lion's Head Meatballs. And this is me looking like Uncle Iroh. Totally giving off that vibe with that sweater and apron combo.